Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware, and this is Gerald Blaine, and we're actually going to continue our series on commonly asked questions in the boiler room. Now, don't forget that we do have a, a lot of different questions that, uh, that, that are starting to flow in, and we want to make sure that you continue to do that. Make sure you do that at the bottom of this video that we are doing here. You can actually ask your question if you do. You're going to get a uh, free hat that we're going to send you. And uh, we've actually, last week, we actually talked a little bit about steam flow measurements and energy monitoring. And this week, we are actually moving into boiler efficiency. Now, here's a question. The question is from Eric. And he's, we're talking a little bit about boiler efficiency, but he's asking a little bit different question um, about um, being carbon neutral. So we thought this would be kind of a good uh, segue into boiler efficiency, if you will, drilled. So Eric says, my company is trying to become carbon neutral. One of the items on the list is replacing both of our 25 year old 1000 horsepower fire tubes. What is a good replacement or alternative to be carbon neutral or greener? Electric boilers, that's maybe a question that he had. Electric boilers, do you do that? How about burners that run on bio? Um, and then he actually asked a question, smaller, smaller boilers like Myura, okay? That's something else that he had asked. So we thought we'd tackle this. This is gonna be a loaded uh, uh, segment with a lot of different things, but Gerald, let's just go ahead and start on boiler efficiency and, and what that is. It's a very good question. Um, and if they're older in particular, uh, there are new, new uh, things that are being done today with like even his fire tube boilers. Uh, the units that we often sell, uh, probably 90% of the time today, is they have uh, what we call extended surface tubing. Mm -hmm. uh, they do 85% more work in heat recovery than a traditional tube. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about an XID? <clears throat> XID is the uh, acronym for it. And uh, because it does so much extra work, you usually pick up three or four percent in efficiency over a traditional uh, fire tube unit. Mm -hmm. So that would be one aspect to it. Uh, it's, it, people tend to leap right to, well, let's just make an electric unit. Right. And typically, in that case, you're just deferring uh, the emissions to some other location. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, the best thing to be carbon neutral is to shut your boiler room down and buy the steam from your neighbor. There, and there you go. <laughs> we move it, now we move it across the street. That's right. So, and the challenge is we sell electric units, so there, there's nothing wrong with the concept. It, it is a zero emission product. Uh, the problems you're going to run into is the, the, your appetite for the energy cost. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I do these studies for people all the time and I show them that it's going to cost them five to ten, no, five to seven times more in their energy bill. Mm -hmm. They would say, well, what else can we do? Right. Uh, because right. The, it, some of these bills are multi-million dollars. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're not ready for that. Right. And more importantly, um, most of the big projects that I've looked at in the last couple of years uh, get turned down by the utility company. Mm. The grid infrastructure is not there. Mm -hmm. They can't get them the extra electricity that right. it takes. People don't realize the level of amperage service that you're going to require to make steam electrically. Right. It is significant. Right. Uh, so after we get through all of that, then we start getting back to the basics. There are a lot of things we can do to improve the carbon footprint, get more neutral. Uh, like as an example here, you've got all these traps uh, and most systems are very neglected. And so a lot of energy waste comes from this. Most 50 to 70% of the energy that we are producing in industry and, and commercially uh, gets wasted uh, in heat losses. So when you say something like that, you, you know, he said two 1,000 horsepower boilers, what you're basically saying is, is that it could be producing a lot of waste and you could actually reduce the amount that you actually need just by doing a Just a making track. sure your, your system is, is tight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because if you've got typically about 15% of your traps a year uh, in just about any brand uh, end up failing along the way. Yeah. And if you're not keeping up with that, it is substantial amount of uh, extra steam production to overcome it. Mm -hmm. Plus the, uh, the problems that, that it usually causes in your process that now we're producing more and more energy to make goods that we didn't have to in the first place. Right. So we, so, so we could be recovering 
um, recovering some heat, maybe even through economizers. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. If you don't have an economizer on your boiler, uh, you're right out of the gate wasting 45% in your fuel bill. Mm -hmm. And so that equals more and more emissions. Mm -hmm. And or you are making that much more extra steam, creating more and more emissions. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that everyone should have an economizer. So as far as like on the, you know, he's got these 25 year old boilers, not sure, Eric, if your uh, burners are up to date, but that is another way that he could actually get more efficient and actually reduce Absolutely. We regularly uh, retrofit uh, older boilers if they're in good condition because they can last a lot longer than 25 years if you're taking care of your water properly and doing the things you need to do to the unit. And when we do that, when we put the new controls and the new technology burners on it, like our Limsfield package, and we have those on our rentals as well, it's about a 14% reduction in fuel. Mm. And that is a significant reduction in your CO2 sure. going into the air. Right. Plus, right. Uh, in our case with this technology, we don't make CO either. Mm -hmm. Most older burner technology produces quite a bit of CO, mm -hmm. quite a bit of CO2 because of the inefficiency. Mm -hmm. And it, it, if you can eliminate all of that, you can have a big impact on the environment. Right, <clears throat> right. Now, um, one of the things that I guess we could go into is that um, this particular plant may be producing steam and there is actually some uh, turbine opportunities maybe that you could, you could use. Yeah, it, we do, we do uh, people think of turbines and they're significantly large and that's the case in, in most utility mm -hmm. plants. But there's a lot of opportunity in industrial environments where they have a high pressure production off their uh, boiler system and we can do a drop down uh, saturated steam turbine mm -hmm. and create free electricity from the motive force of that pressure differential on the steam. Right. A lot of times right. you can send it to your deaerator. Deaerators mm -hmm. consume a lot of low pressure steam. Mm -hmm. And so between that and a large deaerator, we can produce some steam. And then, then your plant isn't requiring as much electricity from a utility right. who in turn is producing a bunch of emissions. So there's all this wasted opportunity. And if you went back 100 years ago, uh, these kind of turbines were very popular mm. because they understood them. Mm -hmm. Now they're not well understood. We're having to re-educate the customer on uh, how these things work. They think mm -hmm. they're complex and complicated. And they're basically, uh, there's not a lot you have to do with them. Yeah. Once you get them all set up properly, you change the oil once a year. Right. I mean, that's about it. Right. But you can get a substantial electrical improvement. And in turn, like I said, we've got this national grid problem. We got the electric companies turning down these projects to electrify and go to uh, electric boilers. And if you can take some of that electricity off of the grid yeah. and make room for other things, now we've killed two burns with one stone. Right, right. Now maybe let's move to um, what he asked at the very end, and that is, uh, you know, some smaller boilers um, and putting a bunch of smaller boilers mm -hmm. in line, mm -hmm. right? Which really, you know, maybe maybe just talk a little bit about that and like what the difference is with, yeah, you can have smaller boilers, but with a boiler with a burner that's got uh, high turn down opportunities, you know, our efficiencies with the boiler, Maybe yeah. talk about the difference there. Yeah, I mean, the reason we use the equipment we use is it's fully modulating. So in order to, in most of these cases where they have these smaller boilers, the turn down on each unit is real minimal, mm -hmm. like two to one. Mm -hmm. So if you want to truly have a system that's well functioning in an industrial environment where loads are swinging fast a lot, maybe not so much in a, in a general heating application. You can get away with being low turn down. Right. Not so much in the process where the loads are swinging. So we usually have eight and 10 to one turndown on a single unit where if you're going to have these little units with very little turndown, you've got to design that into the system. Yeah. So just to get eight to one, you're going to have four units in there. Right. And the, and the, the theory is that, well, when the unit's off, it's not using any money. Or, right. So, so well, yeah. when mine's not operating at peak and it goes down, it's using less. Using less. So, and it's using less emissions. Yeah. So the fact that it goes off or on really isn't any different yeah. 
Uh, but it is more complicated because they have to purge and it takes time for them to restart. And like I said, in a heating application, that works. Mm -hmm. But in an industrial plant that can't afford to wait, it's not very practical. Right. Uh, and so in those cases, they usually have to have two times the amount of units in their turndown in order to make sure that a unit's not off at the wrong time. Right, so. exactly right. Now maybe pushing a little bit further um, into the future, everybody's talking about hydrogen and is that an opportunity to decarb as well? It is, uh, it, it has its challenges and, and you can always go back to our, our, another episode where I talked a lot more in depth about it, but the, um, it depends on how you get your hydrogen. If mm -hmm. you can get it produced from a green source, which is challenging, you know, yeah. you got to either windmills or solar or something like that, it can be very expensive to make because you, you're going to use electricity again yeah. to produce it. So here we go using an energy source that we're already struggling with mm -hmm. to produce another energy source to p spend extra to have. And then everyone's talking about this concept of let's blend it together. Um, with, with natural gas. And then you've got leak issues in the pipeline, you've got transmission problems. So we've got a lot of infrastructure problems just like with the grid. Mm -hmm. Same thing if we start introducing uh, hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Now we do have customers out there that produce hydrogen as a byproduct. So it's local to them. Mm -hmm. And so the infrastructure is a lot easier to come up with and to make it leak proof. Because mm -hmm. it's not traveling across the country and it's already existed. Right. Uh, so I think it will happen. Now in our approach to doing it, we wouldn't make, recommend blending it. We would burn it 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's more, when you blend it, you're really diluting your natural gas, mm -hmm. your BTU content. That's right. It'd be like going to the gas station and adding water into your tank. <laughs> it's not gonna be real practical. Right. right. But we will do it one day. Yeah. It's it just, they're working on the engineering for it. it it's, it's, it's a ways out. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eric, we appreciate your question and hopefully we've, we've answered uh, some things that you can do. Obviously with a 25 year old boilers, there's certainly things that you can do to, uh, to bring it up to speed, but to just go total carbon neutral is uh, pretty hard to do. Um, but there are ways that you can start uh, eating into that, Absolutely. right? And Absolutely. Uh, it's something that we're working on, obviously, um, all the time. If anybody else uh, would like to comment below about this and maybe just, you know, have some suggestions, that would be great. Um, but also look at this infographic right here and see the new topics that are going to be coming up. And if you have a question, we would love for you to uh, put that question down below. And if we read your uh, question, you're going to get a boilerwarehouse.com uh, hat, just like you see here. That's pretty cool. And we appreciate everything that you do with us. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.